What is up, guys? So everybody is back at home due to this whole virus thing. So we got all this time on our hands. So I might as well put it to work. What we got here now is this is the go kart I bought a long time ago, and my brother's been just completely ripping it. So the new thing that we thought is we got a new Predator, the Predator 212 or whatever engine on it, and this is just absolutely ridiculous for one wheel. So because we can, we went out, got a Hulk axle conversion kit. This thing's it's a one inch with a quarter inch spline. This thing's ridiculous. All we have is we just don't have uh, tires yet, but we're trying to get some big ones. And so basically what we're going to go is going to walk through the process of chopping off all the old mounts. Because you see here, this one just spins. You got nothing on it. We're going to have to chop all this off, mount in the axle, put in new bearings, try to get this thing all looking good. So let's get started. So we just got everything cut off the back of you. These are going to clearance on this side. We're going to have a uh, brake caliper. And on this side, we're going to have the sprocket that goes to the clutch. We're keeping everything, engine the same, just running it to that. Next thing we got to do is figure out a way on how to mount pillow block bearings to the underside of this or some other location to where the ride height is not much affected. Because the way it was previously designed, which is very cheap and efficient if you're not going for performance, is just uh, a free axle right here which is just kind of stupid so we got rid of that we're going to mount the axle and i'm going to probably relocate this to either be a handbrake or use the same cable for a caliper on the other side as i said so next thing we got to do is find a way to mount those pillow blocks we're going to run into a little difficulty here because one of the bolts for it is going to run straight near the engine so we might have to if we run a bolt here then it might clear the engine perfectly because the engine doesn't start till about right here. So we might do that. And uh, another difficulty we're gonna have is these bearings are flat steel and obviously the tubes are curved on the outside so we can't really mount it straight up under it. So I have to get a little complicated there, might maybe welding, but uh, let's get those things out and let's see if we can get it fitted. Finally got this thing uh, cleaned up already. So we got these pillow block bearings that can can be greased, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, now the trouble, uh, the problem we're running into now is that see how the bottoms of these are flat. When that thing has to mount up, I'll just show it. Uh, when this mounts up to here, it's gonna rock like that on that too. So now we're gonna have to figure out: Do we take this tube down, which I don't think we should do, or do we take this down, which I think we're gonna end up doing? So we're gonna measure out an equal point on either side, put a notch in this steel for this tube, and it should mount flush right up against that. After looking at it closer, we found out that it's actually the weld that's making the distance for the bearing where we have to mount it. So if you look here, right there, that's the reason it's rocking back and forth. We're gonna mount that there. So we're just gonna kinda even that distance with washers, and it's the same exact thing on the other side. The welds are messed up, so. Once we just get some washers to even that distance, we'll be all good. So we just went to Lowe's and picked up the nuts and bolts for the spacing between the pillow block bearings that are going to be mounting down here. So once we get all these set up, and we also got the washers, but we already had those before. So that's what we're going to be setting up now, and let's just get going with that. All right, so we finally looked at this, and we're going to have to do something that I don't want to do, but we're going to have to do it. So look, we mounted the motor up, and the main issue we're having is if we're going to run a bolt for this thing to be on the underside of here, it's going to majorly conflict with the bottom half of this. And obviously we're not going to notch the engine, because there's oil passageways or whatever in there. And this is going to be down here on the bottom side. Initially we were hoping it would be up here forward a bit, but as you can see, the bolt hole here would basically be directly under the engine, and I don't feel comfortable basically making a captive bolt underneath there. I don't think the weld will hold. So we got some good bolts. And what we're thinking is running one here on the, the right with through the plate, through the tube, and another one on the back on the roll cage. Obviously, this is not ideal. This is not what you want to be doing, but we basically have no other options, and we can very easily mirror it on the other side. So now we're gonna go ahead with that, properly shimming it, and uh, see if we can get that done. drilling the holes for mounting this and it was pretty difficult because this tube going through here we had to cut through that side of it so it was kind of hard drilling but we got through all of it not too much of it I didn't have to cut through too much of it but yeah yeah and then but we got through and then we're just gonna be mounting this straight through here trying to get that level as possible because that gap right there and then we have to create a custom washer because we're gonna go right there, but this is in the way. So we're just gonna cut that with an angle grinder, cut up a washer, and do the same holes over here. Cool. Good, we got center. How much resistance is that? That's not too bad. Okay, if we look at that, all right. that pretty dang good. Yeah, well that's, that's all we're doing is eyeballing. Push our bearings up. So now our bearings are where they're gonna be at ride height. And check all the, let's see, so here's the weird one. This plane here has to be level. Let's pull the bolt up.
All right, so you guys saw us cut off all these old parts and actually put in this axle assembly. So now what we're gonna end up doing in the next video is swapping in the drivetrain. We're gonna get sprockets, brakes, and the engine with clutch and all that, seeing if it works. We did keep the stock engine mounting, which we thought was important here, because actually this, this slotting allows you to make up for any losses in the chain if you're like no half links or anything like that. So that's what we're gonna end up doing with that. And we're still waiting on wheels, so there's gonna have to come much later, but we'll get there eventually. And next video, I might see this thing running, see this axle finally spinning under its own power. So uh, see you guys in the next video.